Welcome in to another edition of Wildcat All In. Today we're joined by men's basketball junior Stephen Verplanken. Stephen, thanks for joining us. It's great to get to know you a little bit. I appreciate you, Paul, man. I'm excited about <laughs> we're this. We're glad to uh, have you. And you know, I think it's it's fair to say that you have kind of a unique background growing up. You're of course came here just this year as a transfer from Southern Illinois, but you grew up in the Dominican Republic and lived there till you were nine. Is that right? Yes, sir. What was that like growing up? What do you remember most growing up there as a young boy? Man, growing up in the DR till I was nine, it was great. I mean, the most, like the things I remember most, probably like going diving with my dad. My dad was a diving instructor, so we would go on a lot of ex excursions, like, you know, swimming and doing all that, playing out the beach. You know, I had my little kayak. I used to go on, in the sea by myself. So that's kind of like my, what my childhood was up to that point. What sports did you play as a, as a young kid? And the Dominican, uh, when I was living in the Dominican, I only played soccer, ironically, because like baseball is like the main sport in the Dominican. But I kind of never got into it, so I was just kind of just soccer guy. Yeah. And then when you were nine, you moved to Belgium. Now, is that where your your father was from, or did he have connections there? Or what yeah, brought? so my dad uh, was born in Belgium, okay. was raised in Belgium too. And my dad's part of the family is in Belgium, so we moved there. Originally, we were supposed to move to Spain for my dad's work. It didn't end up working out, so we moved to Belgium. And there, I, I did, for a stretch, my dad wrote me in so many sports. Uh, I got this swimming, karate, tennis, basketball. Uh, I'm missing one, I don't even know, but like there was so many. I did piano, he wrote me in piano for a time. So like I was just open to anything. And honestly, when I start, first started playing basketball, like, I knew that that's what I wanted to do and went all out. Yeah, when did you know that you could be pretty good at this basketball? Uh, when I really found out it was my first game, so like I came in late because we moved in the summer and the season in Europe starts like in August, September. So I started playing in September. So the season was already started. So I had to do a trial period for a while. And then uh, ironically, I played my first game. I had like 25. And after that, I was like, man, I can be pretty good at this, you know? And my dad was all in and, you know, like he's like, he saw my talent and he gave me the, you know, the things that I needed, like my mindset, the work, like taking me to practice, doing the extra stuff. So like, I'm really appreciative mm -hmm. to my dad and my mom about that. So then another another journey goes in high school to West Virginia in the United States for high school. Yeah, prep so, school, is that right? Yeah, it was prep school. Yeah. So I played with, this, uh, with the best club in Belgium for a while, with the second team of the Youth Development League. And my dream was always to play college basketball at the Division One level. And there was a summer in 2015 where I was like, man, I want to experience the high school experience. You know, you see all these videos on the internet of how like, high school atmospheres, like these top players, and I wanted to experience that. And then, ironically, 2016, a day from yesterday, I got an opportunity to come, and it was to Taze Valley Christian, a prep school newly started, two years in with Coach Ryan Airwood, still my man till this day, and got put with the host family, the Morris family, loved to death, uh, those are my people too. And took it from there, man, and got a great journey. We had had four Dominican teammates on my high school team, so that was like a party every day. <laughs> and we ended up being really good my senior year. Wow. So, and, and you also, we should say, you speak four languages. Yeah, right? I, I would say I speak a solid three and a half. <laughs> Not, a lot of people back home won't give me the French, but I'll take it. You got, you got Spanish, Dutch, English, and French. Yeah, yeah at least so. That's, that's impressive. Yeah, yeah. I'm blessed, man. I was blessed to travel a lot, yeah. blessed to have a mom from one country, a dad from another country, and then education in Belgium was great, so. So in prep school, as you're finishing that, you said you wanted to play college basketball, but didn't sound like the offers were quite there like you wanted. Yeah, so uh, uh, my last year of prep school, my senior year, going into my senior year, I had two offers. Pikeville, Kentucky is a small NIA school, really good school, and Glenville State was a small school about an hour and a half away from where I stayed with my host family, played in the Mountain West Division II. Uh, my, my, Mountain East Division Two Conference, and that was it. Uh, and as the season went on, we had a really good season. I thought I would get something eventually, but it wasn't in God's plans. And Coach Caldwell, who's still at Glenville, he recruited me like on a personal level. He came, visited me. He gave me the belief of like, I know you you want to go Division One, but come here, and I'm gonna give you the opportunity. We can win. And then, like, if you want to leave, I will leave. I'll let you leave without holding you back. And that's something that he held his word to. And I think his belief and his, like, time that he spent with me till this day benefits me, like, with my confidence, the way it's, the things I can do on the court. So, Well, and, and after that great year, you, you played really well. That, that first freshman year, you, you had other Division One offers, which led you to Southern Illinois. 
Yeah, so, so I decided like COVID hit, so the world shut down. I was home and I had to convince myself, I had talked to Coach Kyle of like, I'm gonna stay for another year. COVID, I wasn't sure how things were gonna work out with COVID, were we even gonna have a season? And then I t talked with my parents a little bit and my host parents and this dream has always lingered. I wanna be a division one basketball player. I decided to take that decision and it was hard because I loved Glenville, like small town, love the people. Like honestly, I got cry when I decided to leave because like that, that has such a big impact on me. So I decided to enter the portal. I have co going in. I didn't think I was gonna have much because it's just like you don't, you know. Sometimes you have insecurities, and it's like I didn't think I was gonna have much. And I put my name in there, and it's like a dream because in high school I was writing emails to coaches, texting coaches at the division one level, never really getting a response. Now like all these coaches are coming in trying to recruit you and. Coach Brian at Southern Illinois recruited me, did a great job, and I'm appreciative of the opportunity he gave me there. Well, yeah, then played two years there, and then it led to, to another change and, and here at Weber State. Uh, what did you know about Weber State before you, before you even decided to come here? If I'm being honest, I knew two things. They had Damian Lillard was here. They were, off, off, of course, like a good winning culture that's always been Weber, related to Weber State. And also, uh, they had played Southern Illinois in the football playoffs. Yes. My first year and at lost, Southern. lost, unfortunately. Yeah, lo at, yeah, here at the stadium, too. <laughs> so I knew those two things, honestly. Yeah. Well, what was it, though, that attracted you to come to Weber State? Um, first and foremost was, like, the history. Not even, like, winning, but also the player development. Like, they, guys come here that not necessarily could succeed at their last opportunity, and they come here and they flourish. And I thought that was fitting for my story. But also, like, I knew the coaches had done such a good job developing different players because you, you always need people to help you get better. You know, it's, you can't always do it by yourself. And I had developed that relationship with Coach uh, uh, Duft and Coach Ruiz. And it just felt like home already before I even had, like, you know, like what I was looking for. And then I came on a visit. I saw, I saw that area. I was like, this is the type of area I could succeed in. And I'm a big believer, like when you go to places, you know that, sh that this is the place where you have that gut feeling. And I had that here and I was like, I couldn't ignore it. Honestly, like we were at a, a floor above us in the, f in the football film room and we were meeting with coach and I wanted to commit my last day here, but at the house I had a feeling, okay, I gotta go home. But that feeling was so irresistible. I just still like committed like a day later, <laughs> so it's like. Well, hey, we're glad to have you, and it's been you know early on in the season still, but but you know you you've been playing really well, and we're sure glad to have you on the team. What's your favorite part of playing basketball? Um, favorite part of playing basketball, that's a hard one, man. Yeah. I'll say, I mean, it brings you joy. Like when it's fun, it brings you joy. Like it, I got blessed, you know. I don't I don't have to do something I don't like. I get to show up every day. I get to chase my dream, and for me, like. A big part of that is like showing people back home there's a way out. Like you don't have to stay there if the situation is bad. If you work hard, you can get anything you want. So that's like the thing for me, just like enjoy playing and I enjoy the work. So showing you, up every day is easy, man. And you must love shooting too. <laughs> yeah. You're a shooter, right? <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> funny, funny you say that because like when I was coming out of high school, I wasn't really that great of a shooter. But in my freshman year at Glenville, I knew if I want to go to Division One, I, I had to shoot 40 and up from the three. I'm not the most athletic, quickest guy, so I had to have a skill that separates me. And like Glenville, like every day I was making 500 shots. And when you do that, when you show up every day and you do that, like eventually it becomes a trade, you know, so. Well, you're about to hit a thousand career points and a hundred career games, so that's uh, already a great career. We got two years left still, so we're excited for that. That's no, for sure. I'm excited too for the next few years, man. A uh, so. couple more things to get to know you here quick, Steven. Uh, um, do you have a favorite pro sports team? I would say if I have one, it would be the St. Louis Cardinals. Mm -hmm. Close to SIU last year, I get to a couple games. I wasn't really a big baseball fan until I got there. So I would say the Cardinals. Okay. How about a private pro sports athlete, an athlete that inspired you? Athlete that inspired me would probably be... That's a good one. I'd say Jalen Brunson. Jalen Brunson always be someone I look up to. He's always been a winner. He's very fundamental. Not the fastest, most athletic guy, but works works hard, has a good character. So someone I always like had in the back of my head of like, if I could follow that blueprint, 
I can do something. Mm -hmm. Favorite food? Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> yeah, that's hard, man. Uh, favorite food? I would have to go with an empanada. A freshly made empanada. People back home will know what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, can't go wrong with that. Uh, beaches or mountains? Which you like better? I love the mountains, don't get me wrong. I love the mountains here. The view is amazing every day, but beaches. I, mean, yeah, I grew up beaches. there. So. Are you an indoor person or outdoor person? Outdoor. Outdoors. Outdoors. I like yeah. to be outdoors, yeah. Is there anything that's, that most people don't know about you, Steven? Uh, I feel like some people feel like I'm not approachable. I feel like I'm like, I love to talk. I love meeting people. So, like, if you see me on campus, come talk to me. Or see me on somewhere else, come talk to me. I love, like, making relationships. And, you know, I'm always, like, up to help people. And that's something, like, uh, I like doing. Like, if someone needs help and I, I can help them, that's something yeah. that brings me joy, man. So after you're done playing here at Weber State and you're done playing professionally, your basketball career is over, what do you see yourself doing? You know, if I'm not tired of basketball by then, I, I want to be a coach, a college coach, honestly. I want to uh, coach at the Division One level. I feel like I, if I can give someone the opportunity that Coach Duff gave me, like that's something like, you know, fulfilling someone's dream is always good. But if I'm tired of basketball, I'll be a financial advisor. There you uh, go. Something in the office, you know. Also, talking people, you know, talking, meeting people, something I love to do. So. Money. Money talks, too, yeah. right? Yeah. Steven, it's great to get to know you. Thanks for your time. We're excited to watch you on the basketball floor. Thank you, Paul. I'm, uh, thank you guys for having me. Go Wildcats. Wait, wait, two fingers, two fingers. There you go. <laughs>